What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we'll finish up our State Capital app with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we'll finish up our State Capital app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we're almost finished with our flashcard app here. We've got the app. It shows an image. It shows three random uh, state capitals that we can pick from. Now we just need to create some mechanisms to actually answer and then determine whether the answer is right or wrong. So that's what we'll look at in this video. So let's head back over to our flashcards.py file that we've been working on. And if you haven't been following along, check the link in the comments below to the playlist here. And here we have our state capitals function. And so here we randomize our stuff, right? Pick our three cities to choose from. Uh, put them out onto the screen and then that's it. So we need a few things here. We need to change this a little bit and we'll look at that in just a minute. But for now, let's just create a button to answer, right? So let, we can call this anything we want. We could call this uh, capital underscore answer underscore button and it's a button and it's gonna be in our state capitals frame, which is the frame we're working in right here, you see, right? And then the text, we could say, doesn't really matter, let's say answer. And then the command is what? Let's call this state underscore capital underscore answer. And we haven't created this function yet, but we'll do this, we'll do that now. So here we can capital answer button dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of I don't know, 15 or so just to smoosh it down a little bit. Okay, so let's come up here. And really, we could do this anywhere. But here we have our state answer. So above this, let's uh, create state capital answers. And we want to define a function and we call it state capital answer. And for now, we just want to pass. Oops, there we go until we actually build this out and let's give us some space here. Okay, and below this button, let's go back down to our state capitals function and that button we just created. Let's also create a, an answer label, right? So if we get the answer right or wrong, we wanna output a little message onto the screen underneath this button that says you were right or wrong, just like we did with our state flashcards earlier. So let's do that and let's make it global so we can reference it later. So let's call it uh, answer capital or answer label or capitals, I guess. I don't know. Capitals? I don't know. Name it anything you want. I'm bad at naming things. And so here we can define it and it's a label and we want to put it in our state. Oh, look at this. I missed up right here for our button here. This needs to be this tab the wrong one. Okay, state capitals frame, and our label needs to be in our state capitals frame, right? And for now, the text will equal, let's say, uh, nothing. And we can give this a font of Helvetica and size of, I don't know, 18 or so. Okay, and now we want to pack this on the screen. Now there's nothing here now. And we're doing the exact same th thing that we did with our state capital or with our state function a few videos ago. We're just putting the label on the screen now so that we can change it later, right? So let's give this a pad Y of 15 to smush it down a little bit. Okay, so we're good there. So we've got this button. We can click to see whether the answer was typed or not. Now we need to tinker with our radio buttons a little bit because right now, we're using int vars and the values is one, two, three. Well, we need to know what one, two, and three is, right? Variables or uh, integers aren't a really good way to do that because say we click on Springfield and that's three. Well, if we wanna later on determine whether Springfield was the correct answer, we will have the value three to sort of use it in an if statement, right? 
if three is what? Well, what is three? Is three Springfield? We don't know. So instead of using numbers here, we can use the values themselves, the actual names. But we have to change our capital radio button here to a string var. So string var, right? And this capital radio button is, let's see, where's it at? Right here. It's the variable in our uh, radio buttons, right? So now, instead of this being a value of one, two, or three, we want to change it to whatever the thing is that's on the screen, the actual text. So we can just copy this whole thing and bring this over here and just paste it in for each one of these. Now, this is the zeroth item. This needs to be the first item. This needs to be the second item. Remember, these are list items in our answer list. The zeroth one is the first one. One is the second one and two is the third one. That's just how Python lists are and we know this. Okay, so this is looking good. Now, let's see. All of these are gonna be selected when this thing runs. In fact, we can save this and run this just to see. And when we do, you see, boom, they're all selected, right? And that's not what we want. When we click on one, one of them gets selected, but just by default, they're all They've all got a button in them and we can't have that. So we need to change that real quick. And we can do that just by coming up here and setting this dot set to whatever we want. Well, what do we want? Well, let's just put the first one, right? So that would be our capital or our state capitals answer list. Come back. Here, let's just do it like this. This thing right here, right? So whatever the first one listed is, we want to set that as the one being selected already. So now if we save this and run it again, that should fix that little problem. State capitals, boom, see the first one is listed. And also look here, it says Springfield, right? We want these capitalized probably, right? So let's do that real quick. That's an easy fix. We can just come to the text right here. And then we can just dot title. I think that's the right spot for it. And we do the same thing here and the same thing here. So let's save this and run it to make sure that worked. Okay, now they've all been capitalized. So, okay, that's looking good. Now we need to run some logic to determine whether the answer we actually selected is the actual correct answer. And what is the answer? Well, if we look back in our while loop where we generated these three random names to begin with, we set an answer variable and we called it answer, right? So let's see, somewhere, let's go right here. Let's call global answer so that we can use this variable anywhere in our program. So that should work. Okay, so, but also remember this answer is our states rando. And remember our states is the list of, that's this thing right here. This is the list of states. It's not the actual dictionary that has the names of the, the cities in it, right? So this answer is actually just a state. So then we need to run answer through here to then find out, for instance, if it's California, to find out, oh, the answer should be Sacramento, right? So we can do that. I just sort of keep that in mind. So, okay, let's head up back up to our, to our state capital answer guy up here, and we just created. And let's, let's do some logic here. So let's go if, and what we want is the capital underscore radio dot get, right? And this is our, this capital radio, we come back down here. That's our string var, right? That's the selection we make because that's what we're using as the variable right here in each of our, radio button. So we're basically saying when we call capital radio dot get, we're getting the thing that was clicked, right? The button that was clicked, the radio button that was clicked. Okay, so if capital radio dot get equals and double equal to, we're making a comparison. This is going to be our state underscore capitals, which is our dictionary that has all of the states and their capitals in it. Our state capitals. And then we want to pass in the answer which is that rando state answer from our while loop, right? So if that's 
if that's equal if that equals whatever then let's call response let's just create a variable called response and then for now let's just say correct right else response equals incorrect right and we'll make this fancier later now remember we created this label when we created a button so here's our answer button underneath it we created this label and then we called it answer label capitals It's a horrible name now we can just config update that as we've done with things in the past right so we can go answer label capitals dot config and then set the text to equal response right and that should do it now let's come back here and look at our answer answer label capital or uh capitals and let's make sure we made that global we did okay so this looks like it might work hopefully let's give it a run and see so state capitals i think the answer to that one is sacramento so if we click answer boom correct now if we click pass we get another set well we got the same randomly the same one so we click it again so florida the answer is tallahassee let's click salem incorrect all right so this is working now we can make this fancier if we want and we can do that just by concatenating some things on here if we want so we could say so the actual answer is this right so we could put a space here and then say correct that and then we can go is the capital of then we can concatenate again and then just put answer and let's title to make sure this is uppercase and we'll do the same thing here make sure that is uppercase right and we can do the same thing we just copy this whole thing if we want and let's do that for the incorrect one too paste it all in there okay so now if we save this and run it So let's say Salem, incorrect Tallahassee is the capital of Florida. And we're, we're running out of space here, so we want, might want to change the font or we might want to make this whole thing bigger. Or we could put these on two separate lines if we wanted. So let's get another one, Vermont. That would be Montpelier. Answer, correct, Montpelier is the capital of Vermont. Okay, so I'll let you play around with this and make it look as, as nice as you want or as ugly as you want or whatever, uh, but I'll leave that to you. Okay, so Texas, Austin. Correct, Austin. Awesome. Okay, so now we want to work on randomize, or you know, we can click this pass button to get a new state, and that's fine, right? But really, we want this all to update when we click the answer button. We don't really even need this pass button necessarily. We might leave it in there, but we don't actually need it. So I think we'll look at that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 95,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.